And thank you guys for, for joining. If you guys are unfamiliar with Channel Health, what we do here is provide a virtual hybrid remote uh, rehab program for those working in pulmonary and cardiac rehabilitation. And we've partnered with over 50 hospital systems across the country uh, and really pride ourselves on being the industry leaders uh, within the remote rehab space. With us on our call, we have uh, Amy Olson, if Jared Sealing here today, uh, Barb Vagan, and myself, Reese Glover, and then also Susan Jepson. So the Fast and Curious uh, format, what you can expect, this is going to be a monthly learning series. So we plan to put together a relevant topic or a frequently asked question that, that we hear across the industry. Um, it plans to be a short presentation, generally trying to keep it less than 30 minutes. Uh, if Barb and I can uh, keep it to 30 minutes, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, really, we're just keeping it open to discussion and trying to encourage conversation, really, um, and with no question unasked. Um, if you guys have future questions or topic ideas you'd like to address, you can uh, send those questions to my email, Reese at channelhealth.com, uh, and just include in the subject line, Fast and Curious, and we'll put that to our, our queue of questions that we have. Really, our goal is to keep it fast, and hopefully you guys come curious. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Barb, and we're just going to talk on virtual reimbursement for this first topic. Thanks, Reese. And uh, my job today is to take what seems to be a complex um, topic and make it very simple. So if you recall, um, the 2022 outpatient uh, prospective payment um, and the, the physician payment system was published in November, and it will be in effect on January 1st of 2022. And there's a couple of things. Um, AACVPR did in um, late July um, make some recommendations to CMS. Some of those were considered, some of those weren't. So what we want to just share with you today is really what is, um, what is important to know around the virtual reimbursement component. So first of all, virtual direct supervision. You know that direct physician supervision must be present there must be a physician immediately available and accessible during the times that cardiac rehab, pulmonary rehab, and ICR is being delivered. During the public health emergency, CMS extended this definition that immediate availability of that physician can be done through real-time audio-visual technology. And this does not include audio only. This was something that AACVPR and AACC and AHA really tried to make something to be a permanent solution. But right now it is still only a temporary audiovisual option that does remain in effect through the calendar year of which the public health emergency ends. So currently the public health emergency is set to expire January 16th 2022. So what that means for all of us right now, our direct physician supervision component can be done through real-time audio visual technology through December 31st of 2022. Now that is different from virtual delivery of services offered in outpatient programs. So what we know right now that hospital outpatient services, again, during the public health emergency, CMS allowed our CR, our pulmonary rehab and our ICR programs to be delivered at home or remotely through real-time audiovisual technology. That was made possible through the Hospital Without Walls waivers. What we know is the waivers expire when the public health emergency expires. And again, that is effective through January 16th, 2022. So once the public health emergency ends, we will no longer be able to provide our real-time audio visual sessions to our patients um, because that will uh, eliminate those waivers. What we don't know is if this will happen again. Right now we know that the Department of Human Health Services can only extend 
a public health emergency in 90 day increments. So right now it is ex it's expected to expire on January 16th. We're guessing somewhere around January 14th, we will hear again that it will be um, extended another 90 days. We also know that we will receive a 60 day notice that the public health emergency will be over. So we haven't heard that. Um, so just hang tight. My, my gut, um, and I can't tell you for sure, but my gut is that that public health emergency will be extended at least one more time, if not two. We're, we're in a pretty volatile uh, situation right now, especially with the new variant Omicron and the increased cases of COVID that we're experiencing. So just to recap again, we can deliver our outpatient cardiac rehab, pulmonary rehab, and ICR programs through real-time audiovisual technology as long as the public health emergency is in effect, which it is right now. So now let's go to what I think there's really a lot of confusion about, and that is the virtual delivery of telehealth for physician-based programs. November 2nd, CMS released a, um, a press release talking about this and how they've really extended the ability for telehealth services to be offered through an extended period of time. And we're not really excited about the word telehealth because they're still using that word for cardiac rehab. And we don't really like that word, but that is the word that's being used. And so what that means is if you are a physician office, you can deliver the, the temporary telehealth um, extension has really been extended through, Jan or through um, December 31st, 2023. And so that's very different. And that really caused a lot of confusion in the cardiac, pulmonary and ICR world because they heard we have this ability to deliver this through 2023, but it is only for physician-owned practices that are delivering cardiac, pulmonary, and ICR. And really, one of the reasons CMS is doing this is they're, they're looking for more evidence to make this a permanent offering. We would, have ex we would have appreciated that being extended to the outpatient programs, but for now, it's only in the physician-based practices. That's where there's a lot of confusion. So just remember, um, we in outpatient programming, are attached to the public health emergency and the hospital without walls waiver. But if you are a physician-based practice, you now can deliver a remote, or I'm gonna use the word virtual, because that's the right word, virtual sessions through 1231-23. And just a reminder, if we are doing virtual delivery, this is what we must have in place. Billing one session, it has to be at least 31 minutes. If we're going to build two sessions, it's got to be greater than 91 minutes. And again, remember, session it's session duration, not exercise duration. There's a lot of confusion around that as well. CMS does not indicate how long a patient must exercise or the type of exercise a patient must do. We need to observe that patient through real-time audio-visual again not audio only. So if you're doing a phone conversation with a patient, you would not be able to bill for that session. And you must have your direct physician supervision in place while that patient is having that session. And so again, that piece we know goes all the way through 2022. But if that public health emergency ended, we'd still have the ability for direct physician supervision through real-time audiovisual but not the ability to deliver remotely. And again, just to recap what, um, what uh, codes are, are eligible. So we have the cardiac rehab without continuous ECG monitoring, which is what most programs would be doing if they were doing a virtual. So we got the 93797. I don't know of any that are doing a 93798, but they could. And then we have the two ICR codes, the 0423 and 422. And then where we're going to have something different as of January 1st, 2022, is now pulmonary rehab has really gone, they've deleted the G0424 and they've added two CPT codes. 
the 94625 and 94626, which is similar to what we do in cardiac rehab and ICR, where it's continuous um, oximetry monitoring or without continuous oximetry mo monitoring. All of these codes that are here right now on the screen are eligible for virtual delivery of cardiac, pulmonary, and ICR. Um, on December 7th, there is going to be a more detailed uh, webinar from AACVPR. Karen Louie and Susan Fleck will be talking about not only these final rule changes, they will talk about the new payment rates for the various um, ICR, PR, and cardiac rehab. They're going to talk again a little bit about the virtual uh, supervision, which we talked about. And likely they'll spend a significant time on the 94626 and 625, the new pulmonary rehab codes, which is really um, allowing patients that experienced COVID to come into the pulmonary rehab um, session. So I talked a lot. We promised this was going to be fast and curious. So I'm going to just either open it up to the floor for questions or certainly feel free to throw them in the chat box. Question, your first couple slides. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I do know that, you know, we're not in a physician office, so unfortunately we're stuck only doing it for a short period of time. But can you, can you, are you going to send us those slides? I sure am. Awesome. Thank you. Sure am. You know, and it's hard to say, Kathy. Um, like I said, our gut is that the likelihood of the public health emergency being extended at least once or twice um, is, is probably going to happen. Um, but I do know that we will continue. Um, you know, AACVPR, ACC, AHA will continue to gather data, will continue to look to really hoping that this would be a permanent solution. So that's not over, but right now we are attached to the public health emergency. And Barb, it looks like we do have a question in the chat. Uh, from Michelle, it says here, do you know what are the billing requirements for physician office program might be? I'm thinking of transferring my home-based virtual program to a different department. Oh, I love that question, Michelle. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna, I, I don't wanna speak like I'm completely confident with this, but I do know that it must be a physician owned practice so it can't be under the hospital outpatient programming. So if, if you have a separate physician-based practice that could deliver that, then it can. But I think we would defer this probably to our, our pal, Karen Louie. But we have a cardiology preventive practice. And um, so it, it's, it's pro-fee versus technical yeah. fee. So. It, yeah, and, and you're not alone. There's other groups that are really exploring this. So what would that look like for a physician-owned practice to deliver that? And if it's doable, it's I'd absolutely, I'd absolutely absolutely recommend it. Hey Barb, this is Stacy. I don't have a question, but wanted to pass along a question that was um, in the pulse recently in regards to the new um, COPD charges. And that was in regards to is there a seven, is there still the seventy two lifetime session limit, and um, I wanted to pass along that I think that is the case, but wanted to see what what you thought. Um, that's another really good question, Stacy. I, I do believe that's the case, but again, I think um, we would want to defer to Karen on uh, December seventh, actually to Susan, who's really our pulmonary rehab expert. Thank you. The other thing I'll just throw out there is if you have yet to read the paper by Alexis Beatty at all um, on, from the think tank, it's really good and it really does a great job of defining some of what we're talking about. But really what they're talking about is delineating the words virtual, which would mean real-time audio visual, and then remote, which would be that asynchronous. So your virtual would be your synchronous billable, and the remote would be the asynchronous non-billable. All right, Reese, I'm going to turn it over to you. Sounds great. Well, thank you guys for all joining the call today. Uh,